It's the first lesson of theory of computation. We're gonna say hello with deterministic finite state automata. Let's start a lesson. The transition system in this animation is called tollgate. Nowadays, instead of cache, we are opening this kind of gates with active or passive radio waves. But in our example, we're going to consider using cache. Thus, we'll learn how the cache-based toll gates worked. Let's imagine you opened your gate with 25 cents. In this lesson, we will learn to turn every problem into a language problem. So every coin will now represent the letters that make up a word for us. For example, 5, 10 and 25 cent coins will turn into letters A, B and C. Now let's think mathematically about how we can open the gate. First you can throw 5 times 5 cents to open the gate. This solution is perceived by the automaton as a string with 5 A's. Another solution is 5 plus 10 plus 10. It is perceived as ABB. And so on. Thus our problem has been transformed into a language problem. Now we must figure out which words should be accepted. But, wait. We have a problem. You cannot use traditional programming methods here. Because automaton systems have no memory. So you cannot use variables. When the user puts to machine a new coin, the system cannot remember how much coin has been thrown in total until that moment. Therefore the system cannot calculate how much more coins needs to be thrown to open the gate. Finite state automata use states to remember situations instead of variables. Here we have six circles and each circle represents a state. If we want to solve the toll gate problem with finite state automata, we should see the coins thrown to open the gate as letters on the keyboard. We will design an automaton to solve toll gate problem by transforming coins to letters. First, we need a set of states. Each state is used to remember something. For example in the solution of toll gate opening with 25 cents problem Q0 is the initial state. So we use it to remember that there is no money at the automaton yet. Q1 shows we have 5 cents only. Likewise Q2 is 10 cents. Thus you can comment Q3 and Q4. Finally the Q5 represents 25 cents which is our target. Now we have defined the tasks of the states to use in our solution. Second, we need an alphabet. Since each coin the user throws will correspond to a letter we must first define an alphabet and map which symbol each coin corresponds to. Third, we need to describe transitions among the defined states. In fact it's easier to plan transitions once you've identified the tasks of the states. Since we're gonna write a deterministic program anyway, we have to represent each symbol in our alphabet as an arrow going out of each state. Note that we call the arrows as edges in graph theory. Like the others there should be three edges that come out of Q0. 5 cents 10 cents and 25 cents. We said that in our problem there are three exiting edges from each state in accordance with the alphabet but it is up to the programmer to determine which states they will lead to. Fourth, we have to define where the system will start. One of the states defined to solve the problem must be identified as start state or in other words, initial state. Fifth, we need to define where the system will stop. The states which should open the gate must be described as accept state or in other words final state. We now come to the formal definition of a finite automaton. Definition. A finite automaton is a 5 tuple M equals capital Q capital sigma delta lowercase q capital F. Where capital Q is a finite set. Whose elements are called states. Capital sigma is a finite set called the alphabet. The elements of sigma are called symbols. Delta is a function defined as Cartesian product of capital Q and capital sigma goes capital Q. Called the transition function. Lowercase q is an element of Q. It is called the start state. Capital F is a subset of capital Q. The elements of capital F are called accept states. You can think of the transition function delta as being the program of the finite automaton.
It's our first example. Capital A is defined with W words so that W is a binary string containing an odd number of ones. Here because of the question, our alphabet will be binary. So capital sigma includes 0 and 1 only. Then we should find the states. Since the question does not deal with the letter 0, we can focus on only letter 1. Each letter 1 entered by the user will change the even-odd status of the number of 1s in the typed string. Because of the logic requested in the question, it is sufficient to define two states, q-odd and q-even. Due to the nature of the problem q-even should be defined as the initial state. As the user begins to enter symbols into the system from outside there may be a transition between states but this will depend on the problem. Here any zero symbol entered by the user does not require any state change. But the symbol 1 causes the states to change every time. When we admit this solution to ourselves the transition diagram on the screen appears. Just as we can use tools such as chopsticks other than forks while eating we can also design finite state automata with different tools. For now we will proceed with two tools. Transition diagram and table method. In simple terms, a transition diagram is a graphical representation of the table method. In this example when the system starts up, it boots up in the q-even state and for example if the user enters a zero symbol at that time the system understands that it must remain in the q-even state. A second example. A equals w so that w is a binary string containing 1, o, 1 as a substring. Here when we reach a 1, o, 1 sequence we accept it. This substring can be at beginning end or middle of the string. We said that there is no memory in automata. Then we must design states that enable the system to remember these three consecutive symbols. Examine the situations below. Q is the start state. It means we have nothing. Q1 means the first symbol letter 1 came. It made an alarm. Q1 to 0 means the second symbol letter 0 came. It increases the alarm level. Q1, O, 1 means the third symbol letter 1 came. The automaton must accept the string. Now it's time to plan the initial state. The first question is, what state should the initial state be? Could it be one of the situations that belong to the solution we have in mind or should we add a new situation? After finding the answer to this question we will ask the following question. Have we planned an outgoing edge labeled with each letter in the alphabet for each states of the solution we have in mind? Where should it go if the symbol 0 appears? If symbol 1 comes up where should it go? And the last question. In what states do we meet the conditions required by the problem? We will make the states where all conditions are met the accept state and indicate this with a double lined circle. A third example. A equals W is element of 0 to 1 star so that W has a 1 in the third position from the left. This problem is easier than the previous one. Because the first and the second letters are not important. We can think at first the third letter from the start. The first symbol can be 0 or 1. Also, the second symbol can be 0 or 1. But the the third one must be 1 only. Then we will say this to the automaton we will design. If a symbol 1 comes as the third letter then go an accept stay and stay there. Otherwise go a reject state and stay there. Here we need to remember the sequence number of the letters up to the third letter. Thus, we use at least four states to check the third symbol. Then we add a last state for rejecting. That's all. We need five states. A fourth example. A equals W element of 0, 1, star so that W has a 1 in the third position from the right. Here the last three letters are important. And we need remember them all. Therefore, we need eight different states. Eight states starting with Q000 and going up to Q11. Since each new symbol from the user is added to the right of the string. The last three letters of the string we have will change and therefore the state in the design may 
have to change to another state. After determination of the states, designing the transitions will be easier. Of course for someone new to the subject this question may seem difficult at first glance. Please try to understand the transitions by checking them one by one. If you do not understand why the transitions are defined this way or if the transition diagram still seems complicated to you go back to the previous step. You can review our solution on how we determine the total number of states. That's all. Thanks for listening.